Hi, I'm Jennifer Takaki. Welcome to this edition of the Pickle Club TV. This is pickle news that you can use. We're standing inside the American Museum of Natural History and we're going to go to a class called the Global Kitchen, the Magic of Pickling. We're not only going to learn about pickles, but we're also going to taste them. For those of you who don't know, Adventures in the Global Kitchen is a regular um, program series. Tonight's program, Magic of Pickling. Uh, tonight is actually a uh, co-presentation, myself and Bob McClure, really talking more about multicultural pickling traditions, all the different types of pickles. This, I'm not sure how many people saw this, that book actually came out in 2003. It started as just a information gathering oral history project that I was doing for the New York Food Museum. And then Bob's going to go through more of the process and a tasting. Uh, as well as the uh, formation of McClure's Pickles and how uh, it's become what it is and, and where we're planning to go. My brother and I started our company three years ago based on our great-grandmother's recipe. And my brother and I learned how to make our spicy garlic dill pickles uh, from my dad, and my grandpa, and my mom. The very powerful thing was that pickles are such a New York symbol. Another way that people learned some of these pickling traditions were just oral traditions that were passed down. This research actually started as a small oral history project, really looking at the Lower East Side, it turned into much more. And I was talking to cab drivers from Africa, and I was talking to people's mothers and grandmothers who I went to school with. But her grandmother came to the United States from Poland and the girls would stomp on the sauerkraut to keep it moist and under, you know, submerged in the water. It really became much more about a story about people's lives and how they maintain their culinary traditions when they move here. So this 11-year-old girl taught me <laughs> how to make exceptional sauerkraut. We've had to go through some significant changes that we weren't used to as, as home picklers. How we started out was just by going to restaurants and churches who would rent out their kitchens to us making a small batch, and figuring how to grow from there. We've been used to accepting what's on the grocery store shelves as nutritious or uh, healthy for us, and that's not always the case. So we, as, as food buyers, have taken an interest in finding out as much information as we can about what we're actually consuming. We hand slice every cucumber that goes into our jar it takes quite a bit of time to do this. And I believe that the creation of one's product gives someone that type of fulfillment and direct connection and um, absolute knowledge of what they are creating. Uh, tonight we're, we're gonna taste a lot of pickles, first and foremost. We're all gonna walk out of here smelling like pickled food. And really get people um, involved the sensory elements of, you know, taste and texture and color. My grandfather made the pickles for Gus. Gus was always famous, but it was my pickles. So how long have you been in the business? 1897. I look good for my age. Oh, she's a big bite. This is the spiciest pickle pepper I've ever had, and I can handle spice. And if this isn't that spicy to you, you and I will be BFFs. The Cajun are one of our specialty pickles. We make maybe five or six different specialty pickles. These are actually the least spicy out of the spicy pickles. What's your spices? It's the spicy is the atomic hot and spicy, chili, cayenne, and habanero, and they're soured. When I was little, I only ate, until I was maybe six, I ate apricots and pickles. I ate sauerkraut for breakfast, and um, kimchi for lunch. You know, just, yeah, I really do, I do. Pickles and popcorn for dessert. It was very entertaining, very informative, yeah. I like that. You know, it's only been knowing each other for a little while, but we pickle and they pickle. And we pickle and, yeah. separately. Possibly we could be pickling together yeah. in the future. Relatively yeah. soon, yeah. People in general, uh, are interested in pickling because they want to take ownership in what they eat. I think the recession could have something to do with that because I think people are interested in cooking at home more. I don't think there should be a fear of, of pickling. Um, I think people should walk it, be able to walk into the kitchen and um, feel confident about, about what they're able to make, uh, grabbing a recipe and grabbing a vegetable and sticking it into a jar or letting it ferment. What a great event. You get to eat and learn. I enjoyed myself. I hope you did too. Thank you for watching this edition of the Pickle Club TV.